In 1836, a Presbyterian preacher from Virginia, Robert C. Mansfield, along with James H. Smith, staked out a town in the middle of Missouri's prairie wilderness. They paid $1.25 an acre for that land. They called that new town Mexico. This is Mexico, Missouri, a Ray Speckman production, brought to you by First National Bank of Mexico, Audrain Medical Center, and Commerce Bank of Mexico. To establish a town where the prairie grass grew tall, the dirt rock hard, and creeks bone dry in the summer required fortitude, dedication, perseverance, and spirit. The distinct qualities of those original settlers, James Smith and Reverend Mansfield, remain today in Mexico, a city that refuses to yield, toils to improve, and remains vigilant, grasping golden rings of opportunity. There is a specialness in Mexico. It is a spirit. Tim Williams was born in Mexico. He is a businessman here, an alderman and mayor pro Tim. Like his great-grandfather, W.W., his grandfather, Turner, his father, Warner, and brother, Bill, he has served Mexico in many ways. Why does Tim Williams and a host of others feel a dedication to the Mexico civic commitment? We don't know any other way. It's the way we were raised. If you were born here, you have it. If you move here, you catch it. That's the Mexico spirit. The spirit is many things, an internal toughness and a combination of cooperation, pride, unselfishness, and determination. The original settlers thought that the place they founded near the Beaver Dam Fork of Salt River was the center of expansion of the still developing United States. The name Mexico is a combination of Aztec terms, meaning planet, naval, and place, in the center of the planet. Ironically, Mexico capitalizes on its location today as products manufactured there travel the tentacles of railroads and highways from Mexico's convenient central location. By 1855, two churches, the Christian and Presbyterian, had organized, and a legend was born, the Mexico Ledger. The local newspaper began publishing. And the first pioneering merchant, John Bingo Morris, who had arrived in 1836 from Kentucky, had built his home where the Ledger Plaza stands today. Judge Morris, as he was called, served Mexico as postmaster, clerk of the county and circuit courts, and as county judge. He fathered 13 children and set a precedent of Mexico spirit with devotion to family, a keen business sense, a commitment to civic involvement, and strong religious dedication. In 1858, the first Mexico school was founded, a seminary in the Christian church, and the fellowship of civic brotherhood strengthened. Audrain County provided a grant of $50,000 to extend a railroad into the county. Dr. Nathaniel Allison, a physician in Mexico, promoted the railroad. And when Dr. Allison heard that the railroad would pass a mile north of town, he acted quickly. He donated a large tract of land in downtown Mexico to the railroad, and the tracks were rerouted through the young village. That gift to the railroad is described by Mexico historian Lita Hodge as a vivid demonstration of strong civic spirit on the part of one of its citizens. That spirit remained strengthened through the test of time. And while the railroad was making its way to Mexico, Tom Bass, the most renowned saddle horse trainer of his time and inventor of the Bass Bit, was born. Fathered by white man, Tom's mother was a slave. The sympathies of Audrain County towards slavery is best reflected by the 1860 presidential election where Abraham Lincoln received but one vote in the entire county. And it was in 1860 when a tradition was born, the Audrain County Fair, and just one year later, a Kentuckian, A.R. Ringo, formed Mexico's first bank, the Ringo Bank, later called Mexico Savings and now the Commerce Bank. Later in the decade, in 1868, the Pilcher Jewelry Company was formed, a family business that has experienced but three managers, and where George Stahl, manager since 1947, today honors the traditions of nearly 130 years. Just like its neighbor, the Hagen Store, continuing the tradition of a family name 
on the Mexico Square for many decades. On South Jefferson Street, Hardin College was formed in 1873, touted to be the Vassar of the West by its founder, Charles C. Hardin, the first of two Missouri governors who would come from Mexico. The second was Christopher Kitt Bond, who served as governor and was subsequently elected a United States Senator. First National Bank of Mexico combines honored traditions with the most modern conveniences of today's banking industry. Originally charted as the Farmers and Merchants Bank in 1873 and located in the Ringo Hotel, the bank reorganized in 1883 and became the first national bank. In 1892, it moved to a new building on Jefferson Street, where it remained until locating on East Liberty in 1959. First National Bank has built a solid reputation from its inception by practicing sound banking principles and caring for its customers. The bank's original founders were committed to the growth of Mexico and Audrain County. That commitment remains the same today under the bank's current president, Craig Richards. While honoring its heritage, First National Bank takes pride in meeting customers' current and future needs, implementing up-to-date services, ready for change, responding to need. The First National Bank of Mexico remains dedicated to the growth and prosperity of Mexico and Audrain County. Following the Civil War, land prices dropped to 12 and one-half cents an acre, a bit. Our settlers could buy two acres for two bits, a quarter. The steel moorboard plow found its way to the prairies and the hard rock soil could be plowed, planted, and crops harvested. Farming flourished and a second railroad made its way into Mexico and Audrain County, supported by another county grant, this time for $300,000. Things began to boom in the town on the prairie. In 1876, Colonel Robert M. White purchased the Mexico Ledger, and in 1889, the Missouri Military Academy, a school for young men, was founded by Colonel A.F. Fleet. The backbone of a community and its spirit was forming. A saddle horse, Rex McDonald, destined to be a champion, was foaled in 1890, and a tradition of Mexico as the saddle horse capital began to unfold. One year later, in 1891, Warner W. Williams founded the Crown Laundry on Promenade Street. And while collars were starched and petticoats washed inside, ice trucks made their routes through town. The Williams family watched the laundry business grow, changing with the times, creating opportunities to become one of the Midwest's largest supplier of commercial and industrial linens. And the family continues to serve the community. As agriculture continued to be the main industry, business in Mexico grew and men of vision followed. It was in 1906 that Pete Ertl began a store in Rush Hill, just up the road from Mexico, and today the Ertl presence in Mexico is the progeny of Pete. And it was Pete Ertl who opened a store in Mexico in 1940 that remains today. In 1910, Alan P. Green, an engineer living in St. Louis, purchased a struggling refractories plant, Mexico Brick, for little more than a promise. Young Green, who was making an astronomical $10,000 a year, moved with his wife Josephine to Mexico to manufacture fire brick that was to line and protect the blast furnaces for America's steel industry. And just a few years later, Mr. Green developed a revolutionary way of taking precious fire clay from beneath the prairie surface called open pit mining and he hired a young bookkeeper, J.B. Arthur, to help with the growing A.P. Green Company. Just after A.P. Green moved to town, a new civic organization was formed called the Mexico Civic Club, the forerunner of the Mexico Chamber of Commerce. In 1913, there was no hospital in Mexico. The closest was in St. Louis. Mexico Ledger publisher L.M. White and jewelry store owner R.D. Worrell, together with A.P. Green, established Mexico's first hospital, located in the Windsor Hotel, the forerunner to the Audrain County Hospital that opened in 1919. The 20s brought more and more businesses to Mexico. J.C. Penney opened a store on the square. Continental Products and Mexico Plastics began operation, and the first Phillips 66 gas station opened. And Wetterall Grocery became the second major grocery warehouse operated outside Kansas City and St. Louis. And significantly, J.B. Arthur left A.P. Green to form his own refractories plant 
about three miles north of the green plant. Then came the depression. Hardin College, burdened by $300,000 debt, closed its doors, leaving behind only memories and decaying brick, mortar, and stone. At the same time, the Missouri Military Academy was suffering from an economic downturn. Three men, led by tenacious MMA teacher, Colonel C.R. Stribling, assumed control of the academy on Mexico's east side and set about perpetuating a quality of academic excellence and personal discipline that remains a school trademark. Over a thousand miles away, West Point graduate Walter Staley was serving his country in Arizona. He had married Alan P. and Josephine Green's second daughter, Martha. The Green Fire Brick Company was growing fast and Mr. Green surrounded himself with good talent on all levels. Mr. Green had two convictions. He wanted his family close and he wanted talented people in his business. When Lieutenant Staley and his young bride came to Mexico, lured by an offer of $350 a month, Mr. Green accomplished both convictions. And it was Staley who guided AP Green Company through the depression, even reducing his own pay. 75 years ago, a community hospital began caring for the people of Missouri. And today, as a regional medical center, the long-standing tradition of caring continues. Recognized statewide for our standards of excellence, Audrain Medical Center is meeting the healthcare challenge by providing a full range of specialized physicians and services typically found only in larger metropolitan areas. From state-of-the-art diagnostics, top-flight emergency medical treatment, and cardiac care, to family-oriented maternity and pediatric services, a Drain Medical Center delivers first-class health care, second to none. We're who you need us to be when you need us most. And we're where you need us, close to home. So when it comes to making health care choices, a Drain Medical Center is the healing choice. Through civic endeavors, the local hospital grew, supported by the community and especially by Mr. Green, Mr. Arthur, and Colonel Stribling. But trouble loomed. Two theories of medicine resulted in two medical degrees, a doctor of osteopathy and a doctor of medicine. An attorney general's ruling in the 40s prohibited doctors of osteopathy from utilizing the local tax-supported hospital. And so a new hospital, Mexico General, was born for the ostracized osteopaths. But the town was divided. Both hospitals had a lack of funding. The community was suffering. Action was necessary, and it came from Audrain Hospital trustees, led by Colonel Charles Stribling, described as a man with bulldog tenacity toward goals. Walter Staley Sr., a member of the board, himself described as a man of calm and tranquil assurance, remembers those times. Colonel Stribling was a long time head of the hospital, chairman, and I served on the board with him. And he is responsible for uh, bringing the um, controversy between the hospital and the doctors to a head. And he was the one who forced the issue and got it straightened out. A resulting court ruling had national impact and osteopaths were permitted to practice in tax-supported hospitals such as the Audrain County Hospital and in 1955, the Mexico General Hospital was closed. It was Walter Staley Sr. who had spearheaded the revitalization of the Audrain County Fair and brought the Saddle Horse Show to national prominence. That fair, now a memory, left a void, but Mexico is not a town to leave a void unfilled. On the site of the fairgrounds now is a school and a community-funded YMCA, testaments to civic pride. And the former fairgrounds is also the site of the Mexico Fiesta, hot and spicy it is, recreating the Mexico spirit every May. Events change, but the spirit always remains. And Walter Staley Jr. with an engineering PhD became an equestrian medal winner for the United States in Olympic competition, earning a bronze medal at Helsinki, Finland. Three generations of Walter Staley's walked the grounds of the AP Green Estate. A fourth in the generation, Adam Trawl, is entertained by the baby's uncle, AP Green's grandson, and U.S. Senator Kit Bond. 
In the 1950s, Mexico, the gentle giant, was coming alive. The J.B. Arthur School of Practical Nursing was established. The airport grew, the agriculture industry flourished, fire brick production reached an all-time high, and a new industry, International Shoe Factory, came to town, becoming part of the Mexico spirit. Pete Oliver was born in Montgomery City, raised mostly in a foster home and sought work in Mexico. He drove a cab here. Then, with the help of J.B. Arthur, he bought a dump truck and began working for Mexico refractories. Gradually, Pete Oliver's business grew, first with Oliver Concrete, then in 1962 with Oliver Transportation, a long-haul, over-the-road trucking company. In his own way, Pete Oliver typifies the spirit of Mexico. I got my start with Mexico refactories hauling fire clay from the clay pits to the local plant. Mr. J.B. Arthur and my uncle, Stephen I. Oliver, Montgomery City, Missouri, helped me get started. They had faith in me. And Oliver cares about his community. I really believe that this town is adopting me and I've adopted it. I love this town. It's been good to me. But uh, I, I've been courted by a lot of other towns to move this business. But I feel that this is my home. The Mexico Industrial Development Board unanimously voted to create a new home for Oliver in Mexico, a company that now has over 700 employees and is growing every day. Good industry brings good people. Elmo Enloe came to Mexico in 1940 to work at Pete Ertl's Mexico store. Before the decade was over, he was to be the purchasing agent for AP Green. He tells of involvement in the community. We have a lot of churches and civic clubs in Mexico, 33 churches, and a lot, a whole lot of civic clubs that help make up the spirit of Mexico, Missouri. And when a good idea comes forward, it is the people of the community who provide funds or talents to make it happen. More and more businesses move to Mexico. Plants like Quality Plastics spawned by Mexico Plastics, and in 1992, a new plastics plant, Plastec, success feeding success and a total community involvement. Mark Farnan, the Director of Economic Development for Mexico. In the early 1980s, we went through some pretty tough times here. And as a community, we decided we needed to do something about it, to create new job opportunities for the people who live here. We decided we'd go after the biggest enchilada of all, the Saturn car plant, which was then being bid on. We didn't get that one, but we learned a few things out of it. We learned that big companies will come to small towns and that small things are important to big companies. We've taken that idea and we've applied it in our recruitment ever since. And that's why we have companies here now like Brookstone Company, like Roberts Consolidated, like AB Chance, Arley Home Fashions, Optech from Japan, the New Jersey entry in our, in our uh, lineup of uh, Biocraft. We have a new one from Canada called Zenith Aircraft and our newest that's coming to town, Plastec from Los Angeles, California. Whatever the challenge, the community responds. Bob Marty is Mexico's mayor. In the last several years, we raised over a million dollars privately to build a YMCA. On a similar basis, we raised $176,000 to buy some land to induce the Veterans Administration to build a hospital in our community. That had to be done in two weeks, and we raised it with small and large contributions with time and money to spare. Mexico is green, clean, and safe, and we work hard to keep it that way. We've won the Arbor Foundation Award for Tree City USA for the last 15 years. We have a strong program for upgrading our housing and removing blighted areas. In fact, it's the only program of its nature in the state of Missouri. A.R. Ringo, an enterprising Kentuckian with a vision, came to Mexico and in 1861, while the Audrain County Courthouse was occupied by federal troops during the Civil War, began Audrain County's first bank, the Ringo Bank, on the Courthouse Square. Through the years, the bank has grown and prospered with Mexico and Audrain County, becoming the Mexico Savings Bank and now the Commerce Bank, an association that brings unlimited banking capabilities together with traditional personal attention. Community leadership is part of the Commerce Bank tradition. Names like A.P. Green, William Courtney, H.B. Plunkett, Colonel C.R. Stribling Jr., William S. Lowe, Robert M. White II, Robert E. McIntosh and Colonel Charles R. Stribling III have been associated with the bank. Just as they contributed to the community in the spirit of Mexico and Audrain County, 
As the 21st century dawns, the Commerce Bank remains committed to its heritage and the community it has served for over 125 years. The Audrain Medical Center provides medical services to a large regional area and is staffed with qualified doctors and specialists. The doctors and the hospital always responding to changing community needs. We were the first county in the state to take advantage of the law which allowed the establishment of a county hospital. Now AMC is again looking to the future as it plans its $21 million expansion program of its building and health care services. AMC will continue to take a leadership role in providing important technology and medical service for the people of the area. People coming to Mexico mesh well with the community. Barbara Miller is a local restaurant owner and sees the city open its arms to newcomers. There are no strangers in Mexico. People come into the community and immediately become a part of it. That sentiment is echoed by native Steve Ertl, who is president of the Chamber of Commerce, president of the Country Club, and president of the Commerce Bank. When somebody comes to town with a talent, we find a place for them in a hurry. Mike McGannon moved to Mexico, was transferred to another town. He had an opportunity to return, becoming vice president and general manager for Optech, the plant recruited from Japan. When I moved away, I didn't want to. My family and I missed Mexico. When I had the opportunity to come back, it took me about two seconds to make up my mind. Nothing is taken for granted. Long the home of the Miss Missouri pageant, Mexico spirit leader and former mayor, Larry Weber, is chairman of a nonprofit corporation to keep that pageant in town on the striking campus of the Missouri Military Academy. And people like Stacy Dye, private business persons taking advantage of opportunities. Stacy helps people with their insurance forms. Stacy Dye has done exceptionally well. As new industry moves to town, it creates opportunities for new small businesses. Still, Mexico retains its charm. Presser Hall, a hardened college icon, is being refurbished to its original splendor. New seats will be added soon. The money, it comes from the community, from people who care. The Mexico spirit grows stronger each day. The community responds to demands while retaining its heritage and splendor. Legends live in Mexico, like Art Simmons, who trains saddle horses in a gated artistry of motion and style. The countryside is spotted with industry now, neighbors with agriculture heritage, a diverse mix but with a common denominator, people who produce. The ethic that we find in our employees uh, here in Mexico affords us the opportunity to operate at, at high levels of efficiency and at lower levels of operating cost never before achieved in the history of our company. That tells the Mexico spirit, the people, working hand in hand for a common purpose. It's not accidental that Mexico is succeeding. The banks are aggressive, yet sound, showing strong stability, competing aggressively, but fairly, for area business. Missouri Military Academy under Colonel Charles Stribling III maintains the highest degree of academic integrity, nationally recognized and displayed, and Colonel Stribling contributes to the community just as his father before him. Before kindergarten was a part of the public school curriculum, this is Nora Gilman, now a noted storyteller, prepared five-year-olds for life's challenges. Those students represent the core of Mexico's community. The Mexico schools are Missouri's top rated and a private, not-for-profit corporation brings together leaders of the community. They raise thousands of dollars for private and public schools to provide special education programs for Mexico's students, channeling private resources into the schools of Mexico. There are playgrounds and parks and more churches than stoplights, a community of faith that becomes an integrated part of the Mexico spirit. All working together, a symphony of community allegiance it is in a town of spirit. I was here because the Lord put me here. Without the Lord, I firmly believe I wouldn't be here. Every day he helped me. My conviction is I want to put a little more back than what I took. And I firmly believe if the world were like that, we would be a better world today. Colonel R.M. White of the Mexico Ledger wrote in 1876 what he called the Mexico slogan. His great-granddaughter and Mexico civic leader, Laura White Ertl, remembers his prophecy. 
My great-grandfather probably described Mexico's spirit best when he wrote, to our pride in the past and our hope for the future, let us have vigorous work in the living present. It's true today. That's it. That's the Mexico spirit. This is Mexico, Missouri, a Ray Speckman production, has been brought to you by Commerce Bank of Mexico, Audrain Medical Center, and First National Bank of Mexico. Promotional consideration furnished by the Best Western Stevenson Motel in Mexico, where your hosts, the Clements family, bring English country hospitality to mid-Missouri. And by the Picador Restaurant and Lounge, where the quality of food and friendly atmosphere reflect the Mexico spirit.